Hello, Internet. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To. So I show off a lot of music on these vlogs, as you've probably already seen. And a lot of the things that I show off can be very, very simple sounding music. Aside from the experimental music I show off, which might sound complex, but is more or less actually improv to and more improvised than anything. This week's video, I want to show off some albums that are more technical and sound a lot more complex and composed. They feature odd time signatures, unique instruments. I have a handful of albums that fall all under that category, so with all that being said, let's get started. The first album I have here is the Blue Men Group's Audio. I saw these guys perform live in Las Vegas at the Luxor Hotel when I was a little kid. I don't really remember the show that well, but what I do remember was really vivid and bizarre, but really, really cool. For those of you who don't know who the Blue Men Group are, they are a performance arts trio, three dudes dressed up in blue and black, and they don't talk at all. In fact, they give these quizzical, puzzling looks to their surroundings, and yet they do these performances that are fantastic. What makes these guys so complex is the instruments they use to create sounds. They use anything from pipes that they hit with ping pong paddles that make this dunk 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 sound, or opening up a piano and playing the piano inside there as opposed to playing it with the keys. They essentially just use whatever they can find that creates unique sounds and incorporate that in their music. So this CD is actually the first album they ever put out that just consists of the music that they perform live. Some highlights off this album include the first track, TV Song, which they use these really long sticks to create this whooshing sound that serves as a rhythm. Rods and Cones is my other favorite song on here. Uh, Definitely more rock oriented, but also very percussive bass. I don't really think they use some odd instruments, but the drums that they use just have this huge presence to them and it creates kind of this bassy atmosphere. I recently picked this up because one, it was in the dollar section, it was super cheap, and two, because I wanted to own my own copy of it. So I grabbed it. It's a fun listen, and if you have an opportunity to see them live, I highly recommend it because it's a great experience and they're a lot of fun to watch. The next album I have here is called Repetition by a band called Unwound. They're a really, really legendary post-hardcore band from the 90s and were popularized because they were signed on the label Kill Rock Stars. What makes them unique is they really, really experiment with their sound. So there's songs that are very noisy, but there's some that are really artsy and some that are really melodic. They're just all over the place, but that's what makes them great. I can't remember exactly how I first discovered this band, but I do remember the first album I ever heard by them was Leaves Turn Inside You. So I've been listening to that album for years, but I kind of forgotten about the band, but one day Amoeba was playing this album in store and I really dug it. The employee at the store was really endorsing this band, saying that their early stuff is really, really underrated. So I took his word for it and I grabbed this one to start with. I like what I've heard off of this one. I will definitely look into their other albums, but until then I'll be checking out this one. The next album I have here is called Wonderful Rainbow, and this is by a band called Lightning Bolt. I bought one of their albums, I can't remember which one it was, I'll show it on the screen here, but I bought that album and when I first listened to it I was blown away by it. It's noise rock music at its finest, but as their band name suggests, it's fucking fast. And despite having this huge sound, the band is actually a duo. Two Brians, Brian Gibson and Brian Chippendale one on bass, one on drums. Both of them are 
fucking incredible at what they do. It's amazing to me that you could create such amazing music with just two instruments. I found this one in the dollar section of all places, and I was kind of baffled by it because this one I think is their most popular release. And considering that I don't own any of Lightning Bolt's albums physically, I decided to give this one a home. If you're a fan of noise music, definitely check this one out. They are a total trip. albums I have here is a pair, both by the same band. These are two releases by a band called Mission of Burma. I first learned about this band when reading the book Our Band Could Be Your Life. They are a Boston-based band. Very, very, very unique sound for their time. The three main dudes include Roger Miller, Clint Connolly, and Peter Prescott, but they also had this phantom fourth member named Martin Swope who used tape loops in their music. Back when they first emerged in the 80s, incorporating tape loops in this post-hardcore punk music was unlike anything anyone had ever heard. Not to mention on top of the tape loops, their music was very angular and artsy sounding. Unfortunately, I think they were way too ahead of their time because they didn't actually take off until years later. So this is their debut release. It's technically an EP, but it's been reissued and repurposed so many times that it may as well be a full album. This particular edition has got their best songs in my opinion. Academy Fight Song, That's When I Reach For My Revolver, and then my personal favorite, All World Cowboy Romance. They released this album and then they released their legendary debut album, Versus, which I also have in my collection, and after that, they broke up. Part of that reason is because Roger Miller has tinnitus, which got progressively worse as they performed live. But in 2002, the band reunited and started putting out more records, and that's when we had albums like The Sound and The Speed. To be completely honest, I haven't really listened to this album, and if I can be even more honest, the reason I got this album is because of the back cover here. There was something about seeing this photo of them in the studio that just looked so cool. They've gotten older now, but this photo to me just sort of hints that even though they're old, they still have that raw punk energy. I think at this point, Martin Swope is no longer in the band, but he's replaced by Bob Weston, who plays in Shellac. And to keep things pure, Bob actually uses tape loops, even though the technology has involved and they don't really need it. He still wanted to keep the band sounding like they used to, so he uses the tape machine. Absolutely killer band. Highly underrated, but totally worth checking out. They are super cool to listen to. We album I have here is called Doppelganger by a band called Fall of Troy. This is probably the first math rock, math core album that I ever heard. I had a friend who had this older brother who I guess you could say at that time he was emo. He had the hood on, he had the super skinny jeans, the long hair that covered one eye. He was just the token emo kid. So he was into a lot of hardcore music, a lot of I guess you could call screamo music, which just saying that term makes me cringe a little bit. But amongst all the stuff he listened to, Fall of Troy was one of them. These guys definitely transcend the screamo label because their music is far more complex and interesting than any sort of screamo music I've heard. Very technical guitar-driven music, complex time signatures, rooted in post-hardcore music. There's some screams here and there, but overall their music is very, very melodic. The two songs I distinctly remember hearing when I first was exposed to this band was FCP Remix and Mouths Like Sidewinder Missiles. All this time you know. 
Years and years and years later, I eventually got the album digitally so I could listen to the whole album. And even more recently, I got the album on CD because I really wanted to own a physical copy. It's a really fun album to listen to and it really brings me back to when I was a kid and I first listened to this album. I wanna see the day. The last album I have here is by a band called Tram. Back when I was working at a pizza place, I met my friend John, who is a total token metalhead. Super long hair, a couple piercings, but the nicest fucking guy. He actually is responsible for exposing me to a lot of awesome bands. Boards of Canada and Animals as Leaders are the two that come to mind. This one is the very first album he exposed me to. It's a one-off supergroup consisting of Tosin Abasi and Javier Reyes, who are both in Animals as Leaders, Eric Moore, who was the drummer in Suicidal Tendencies, and Adrian Terezes Gonzalez, who was in the Mars Volta. They all came together to make this fucking fantastic album, and then they split and never made anything since. The best way I can describe how this one sounds is a little bit of each member's background shows on here. There's gents, there's prog rock, there's punk, there's jazz, there's Latin music, there's psychedelic music. It's all over the place, but it is done so well and it sounds incredible. If you have not listened to this band, I highly, highly, highly recommend checking this one out. And for whatever reason, if any of the members of this band are watching this video, for the love of God, reform, make another fucking album. This is so good. You guys had something great going here and it sounds amazing. Okay, internet, that does it for me. There sounds like there's an ambience gonna be passing me soon, so I think this is a good point to stop. If you have any bands or albums you want me to check out, particularly any complex sounding bands or albums, leave a comment down below, and if I like them, maybe I'll include them in a vlog. But until then, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out, goodbye, and there goes the ambulance.